da, da, I don't know where it's at in the song because I can't hear it. It's in the love stuff and things. Da, 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 who knows? <laughs> All right. Let's party, uh, sorcerers. So, uh, I've done a couple of these with Dylan where we've done uh, discussed the idea of a entire party made up of one class. So we've done barbarians and we've done bards and we're going to skip over to sorcerers. Uh, saying hey to Adam. Hey, Adam. What's up? We just had a nice. We're having a nice little chat pre uh, pre discussion on the you know the backyard farming and all that. Um, but yeah, I turn, and I forgot to mention my peas are doing real good. We got snap oh. peas because I have a yeah. decorative decorative tree in the like north north east corner of the front yard. And I was, and somebody said, "Oh, your peas need shade." And I was like, oh, "Okay, I'll just plant under this tree." And they like, they're like growing up into the tree and like, oh, on cool. and stuff. And so we yeah, they good, like uh, to grab on. Yeah, to, they'll like spin around and grab on. It's kind of cool. Yep. And then we got those. We got some like nice. We got nice beans in the backyard going up the trellis with the the scarlet runners. So getting the okay. hummingbirds coming in and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, fun! Yep. Wow, you you did a good job. Yeah. Yeah, from bare yard to flipping everything over and uh you know trying to trying to do something during quarantine um <laughs> uh yes. anyways to our to our discussion uh sorcerers uh are really interesting so we're, we'll talk about the the three tiers of play we'll talk about combat uh tactical stuff um exploration you know kind of skill-based stuff and then like role play story stuff uh, and how sorcerer, a uh, whole party of sorcerers can kind of fill all those roles. Um, so uh, we could start with combat. I know there's different, like, sometimes people think of it like uh, like MMORPG kind of stuff, where you think about your yeah. different roles, of, like the striker and the tank and the... Yes, uh, right. And it's kind of hard to tank with a D6 hit die. Uh, <laughs> as right. as, uh, as Boodle uh, learned in, uh, in yeah. rough fashion against some giants... Um, Little little gnome sorcerer got kind of squished. Um, yeah, my gnome sorcerer, it, and and he was maybe trying to do too much in that battle. Mm. He was really dishing out the damage with the lightning bolt, right. and uh, and probably that turn he should have taken the hide action. Mm. But uh, you know, you learn. Yes, That's I mean, for all for all Boodle knows, he could have taken out that giant, and then hiding from it would have been silly. Um, yeah. Your dead giant can't can't smash you with a rock. Um, on the which it kind of brings me to one thought I had, which was how to make like a tank sorcerer or as, yes. as tanky as possible. I'm um, curious about your idea. I came up with one, but I'm, I'm curious about yours. I have I have I have two generally. Um, okay. One is always uh, lizard folk because okay. lizard folk have a natural armor and uh, it's like 13 plus dex mod or something like that. Okay. Um, so they can get decent armor if you can invest in that dexterity. Um, I think they get a bonus to constitution so they can be a little tougher. And then they have a bonus action bite attack uh, which can heal them a little bit. Now that's kind of asking a lot because you want them to have a good charisma for their spell casting, a good constitution to be tough, a good dexterity for their uh, attacks, for their yeah. AC, and then a good strength to be able to hit with that bite attack to uh, true, to regain some true. HP. So it's a bit of a tall order. Uh, the one that I thought was a little more realistic was just a dwarf sorcerer. So, uh, like, and in my mind, I was like, a dwarf divine soul sorcerer is kind of just a cleric. Um, right. Cause they it's get, like a different flavor of a right. cleric. Different way, like it's like a roundabout way to be a cleric, sure. and uh, yeah. the idea of like, well, you're you're dwarf, so you get medium armor proficiency. Uh, I think you can take uh, the, the sub race that gets like extra hit points. Um, yeah, and you can uh, uh, have your casting on top of that, and that could be cool. Uh, but the uh, the other serious thought I had was a uh, a half orc shadow sorcerer. Was hmm. is something I thought was cool. So the sh the shadow sorcerer and the half orc both have an ability where it's like if you get hit to one hit point, or if you get hit to zero, you can then pop to one. Correct. Yeah, with, yeah. With shadow sorcerer, it's you make a saving throw, and if you make the saving throw, you drop to one. But what's yeah, a fun? Yeah, it has to be DC yeah. five 
plus the damage. So yeah. if they did like 30 damage and dropped you, there's no hard. way you would make um, that. Stupid. But what's nice about the half work is you can then, it's not like it doesn't use your reaction to like do the ability. Sure. So if you fail the save, you can then do the half work ability to drop to one. Uh, and then yeah. you still haven't used the Shadow Sorcerer ability. So if you then get hit again, you can then try to make that save again. So you it might get, crap. yeah, and if there's, um, there's probably a situation where you might have taken 30 for that first hit, but then somebody just tried to ping you with like five damage the next time, and then you're probably going to yeah. make that save and stay up for a whole other action. And, I like those. Yeah. I like that idea for, for the dwarf. Yeah, that's armored, like, and a fake the, uh, cleric. I actually, I've always wanted to do a game where everyone's a fake class. So every, like, the, uh, the paladin is actually a celestial warlock packed to the blade. Yeah, I <laughs> and so he's not a paladin, but he does all the paladin stuff. Uh, so I you, like that. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's a paladin. And then same with the cleric, like, oh no, that's a dwarf sorcerer. That's not a cleric. Um, I love that idea. The uh, like the, I think there's a way to do like like a bruiser rogue who you think is the barbarian, but because they do a lot of damage, um, but really it's just a rogue just smacking stuff super hard. Uh, with a totally different ability. That's fun. Um, so yeah, I thought that I always kind of have that in the back of my head. Uh, did you have any other tanky? Uh, I know there's like s some spell options. You like uh, use yeah. if you have any kind of okay AC and then casting shield. You sure. Can, you can deflect a bunch of hits. And um, shield shield spell itself. I mean, maybe for every one of your sorcerers, might take that for your first first level. Mm -hmm spell and you wouldn't change it. I mean right. potentially every potentially at every level you're going to find that useful. Right. But um it okay, so it would depend on the campaign that you're allowing. <laughs> but my idea for a tank is a turtle. Turtle, yeah. Because of the natural AC. Mm -hmm. That and then also kind of this idea of like if I'm really in the thick of it I could just suck into my shell and add another four AC. Right. Then, then when it's maybe safe or my team says come out as a bonus action, I could pop out and maybe dish out some damage. Right. So that could be. That was kind of the only thing I was like, who has what kind of race has just a natural AC that we wouldn't even have to worry about. Right. Uh, bulking him up. Love the idea of this this turtle. Uh, for whatever reason, the. Uh, I, I would want it. This would be a homebrew thing, but I sure. love the idea of a turtle, draconic bloodline sorcerer. That's a dragon, uh, like a dragon turtle descendant. Um, oh, cool. And then so they have a. You maybe tweak the abilities so that because they're already sitting on a seventeen AC, so that the dragon bloodline where they have like a thirteen plus something AC. Uh, maybe you you tweak that to be just a plus one AC. They're like they're just a little harder with their dragon turtle heritage um yeah. maybe they have steam um magic or something it takes some tweaking but i, I, I thematically like yeah. uh thematically i am pleased by the concept of a like a dragon turtle descendant turtle sorcerer. i like that and maybe make it more like a tortoise in appearance so mm -hmm. that it's a little more sharper and like because of you know this dragon maybe descendants Right. And uh, you would like sort of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Tortoise Mutants. Mm. Uh, that the bag. I don't know if you remember that movie, but when I was a kid, I loved oh yeah that. yeah yeah. Uh, the li I remember the live action when they get mutated. The live but, action yeah, yeah. one. They, the they, snapping uh, turtle. But um, but just maybe a turtle that's a little more dragon looking, but right. it's still a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> um, the downside of that would be. Uh, the plus one to wisdom doesn't help a lot, but right. the under the water stuff could mm -hmm. be helpful. Or like breathing. Yeah. Or um, I mean, you you're explore. You're, so you're there for the seventeen AC, uh, and yeah, then it's and, really uh, it's being really like I'm gonna use my one spell selection for shield, and then I'm gonna have a seventeen AC. So I'm gonna have a twenty two AC when I need it, uh, and beat the sorcerer. Yeah. Um, is just kind of is funny it's a that's an interesting uh that'd be an interesting way to tank it out and then i know for a for like a healer there is just there's only really the divine soul sorcerer option but it's a good option uh, it's you might even have a few players you could have that. a couple because the idea of a 
using metamagics on things like inflict wounds is mm. nuts. Uh, and I know I've always liked the, uh, uh, there are two things that I think are really fun with the Divine Soul, which is twin, and they're both twin spell. So mm. using twin spell on uh, Guiding Bolt is super powerful. Uh, nail in oh, two different creatures for 4d6, right. and then advantage on both of them for the as the next people go up to attack. Now that would be that relevant here because there's not going to be that many people running up and smacking somebody with an axe. Um, but the other thing that's really cool is uh, twin spell healing word. The idea of using your bonus action to bring back up two different characters that have been dropped. So that's, that's true. you're using your bonus action to generate two actions. That's for, uh, awesome. yeah. yeah, they're gonna each of them are probably gonna get a full turn. Uh, depending on where you're at in the initiative order and if they get hit again and all that yada yada, but you're you're popping up two people with just your bonus action. You still get to throw a firebolt or something, um, and uh, yeah, just keep keeping everybody from from dropping. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I would say if you're doing this full party thing, that's gonna probably be a necessity. That somebody's got to be a divine soul sorcerer with healing word to stop people right. from you know actual dying. Also, um, is is there a cantrip that you can like stabilize somebody? Or? There is. I would need to look up if uh, there's. I feel like it's an there's action. One. I feel like, but you could quicken spell that. Um, you could quicken and and do that. Yeah. And then, um, you still can only do a. You can still only do a cantrip as your action if you're doing a cantrip as a bonus action. Ah, gotcha. Um, okay. But it's still, if like if the divine soul sorcerer can get it, they probably should get it. Um, yeah. Because they are they're already kind of filling that healer role, um, so it's probably Could a good be idea. Useful. And I'm not I'm not that worried about like a striker, because uh, part of the nature of the spellcasters is they they're very can be very explosive damage wise. And yeah. the way cantrips sort of uh, scale up the way they do in 5th edition, I'm not that worried about them. Uh, the, the concept of, like, five different characters all hurling firebolts at somebody when they go to the 2d10 damage, I'm like, that's plenty. That's going to take out a lot of things, especially at the range that they can. That's uh, so true. And, yeah. and also combining that with maybe you have a person who's specifically geared toward dealing the damage, they might take the heightened meta magic, mm, or yeah. they might take certain meta magics that are going to help them with that. Right. But um, I did think of this though, so it's spare the dying. As, yeah. And you could you could potentially use distance on it and be thirty feet away mm. because it's normally touch. Right. So yeah. this is where like sorcerer starts to kind of be a little bit more unexpected, I would say. Like mm -hmm. it, it's the kind of things that I feel like it's actually more scary to me as a for the DM to have one of the NPCs that are fighting <laughs> that are fighting the players. But right. I think you had uh, you had a sorcerer do something to us once, but like something like subtle meta magic, right. you don't you can't counterspell it. And so yeah. there's definitely... some I think uh, rules is written. I think Jeremy Crawford might have mentioned that about I don't remember his ruling on it but I remember it being a little back and forth because sure. it's one of those uh, he like it was one of those like in the rules there was nothing preventing you from counterspelling it except that it needs to be an effect you can see and then it's a well can you see it when they're doing subtle spell and it's like sure. it's like well they can see it but they don't see it. like it got confusing there they don't um, see it happening maybe if right. it, if it's just a verbal component mm-hmm and you use subtle, and right. then potentially the players never saw it, and if their yeah. perception check or something didn't happen. Yeah. Um, um, it would, I do I would, love those ideas about subtle spell in role-playing situations. A subtle banishment would be hilarious yeah. in Absolutely. like a, a role-play situation. And it's just like, I just picture some nobleman just being like, you may not do this in our... And he's just like gone. gone. <laughs> People are just like, and what? No one knows. No one no knows. One know. And then a minute later, he just comes back screaming. <laughs> Same with, uh, okay, for, for, this works somewhat in battle as well, but mm. um, if you did charming spells or um, mm. command, right, if yeah. you were divine soul, and you could kind of, you could subtle that, and people wouldn't yeah. know 
that you had done it. <laughs> just, and, you're in the middle of a negotiation, and you just go a subtle like run, and because the, oh, the person wow. you're negotiating just runs out of the room. <laughs> I do love it. I yeah. do love it. Uh, the uh, 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 the other the other thing before we move on to too much of the the role play uh, aspects sure. of it, but um, the other thing I was thinking about was the two main combat scenarios I think of when it kind of evaluating that full party of one class, which is the the level one twenty goblins and then the level twenty one Tarask. Um, mm. One of which is a or both of which I feel like are very pretty easy answers for yeah. the all sorcerer party. And uh, and I know I know the the property is a little uh, problematic in a couple places, um, but there's a there's a very interesting scene in uh, for, just from a mechanical tactical point of view um, in Goblin Slayer where they they use sleep spells to just like uh, fully knock out this whole horde of goblins and then just yeah. go through and and murder all of these goblins. Right. Uh, and so for the twenty goblins, I was like, oh, you, well they have. Burning Hands is an option, and then there's the Sleep Spell. And if you have, like, three of these sorcerers that have access to sleep in their first couple levels, uh, this horde of, like, goblins approaching, you just, like, and they all just, like, fall over. And then you just kind of walk up and just, like, you know, coup de gras them. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot to, um, to uh, when you auto-crit on a goblin. Yeah, and, and that also plays into the sorcerer's sort of um, kind of doing things that are more deceptive it seems mm. or or that they can I feel that a sorcerer could be a good type of infiltrator because yeah. they're good with persuasion they they could be good with deception and all these things that work with charisma right. but then they're using you could use sleep and you could use these things that are sort of non-lethal but yeah. you could make them lethal the down and, the, uh, yeah. the sort of downside on it is just that the sorcerer's spell selection is so limited. Like, I think right. they only know two spells at first level. So they might be... They're very good at the spells that they have, uh, but they are they are pretty limited. So Correct. you do need to have a chat with the party of, like, oh, it's like one of those, um, hey, we need some area of effect things. We need two or three right. of you to pick Burning Hands or Sleep or whatever. Uh, you maybe can swap it out at later levels when we have access to Fireball. Um, once you have five casters that can all cast fireball, there's a lot of scenarios that are just not problems the anymore. Would be done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like really, and there's a thousand goblins. Be like, well, there's gonna be twenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, that's true, and it it is something I ran into as a problem because we didn't have a wizard in our mm. first game that I played with everyone, right, and. As Boodle, I was always trying to find that balance of what can I do where I can do a little bit of utility here because we don't have a wizard, and it right. was always this fine balance of like, oh, this is yeah. such a challenge to choose between two things where maybe I want to deal some damage, but then right. I'm like, maybe I should have this other spell that it's one of those uh, if you don't take fly we can't get over that wall, but improved right. invisibility is sitting right there. And it's I like know, staring at you. <laughs> yeah, and, and with something like uh, meta magic, you could you could maybe do a what is what is the one that uh, doubles the time for it? Oh, uh, like extend and spell, extend. yeah. Extend. I mean you could make your you could make your invisibility greater invisibility last you could like, I think I think I've ruled that because invisibility lasts an hour. Uh, I've ruled that if you like cast invisibility and then immediately go into a short rest, you can finish a short rest and you just turn visible immediately as your short rest finishes. Uh, which is interesting for like warlocks who who get their their spell slots back on a short rest. Yeah, um, yeah that's interesting. But uh, but if you could uh, do an extend spell. Um, you could get a short rest and then still do some stuff and have the you know have another hour uh, or near hour of invisibility. So sure. you could like turn invisible, find a place to hide, take a long rest, and then come out and put yourself wherever you want before your that invisibility ends. Um, also, you mentioned fly and the yeah. something that uh, is scary with a sorcerer is if you're limited on your spell slots and you mm -hmm. take fly and you don't have something like featherfall. And right. you get hit, you <laughs> you could die. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so so I was thinking for this party, 
you might choose an Aarakocra. It's a oh, happy, yeah. Happy, because you couldn't counterspell their flight. It's just it's innate. Just flight, in their yeah. I think, there's a, I think there's a tiefling option out of Sword Coast that also, like, they forego all their spell options and they instead get, uh, like, demon wings and get a fly oh, speed. Oh, okay. That's, um, another, that's another idea. And, yeah. and uh, tieflings would have an, an additional uh, charisma, if, if that's oh, right. Yeah. Yep. So that could be good. The Aarakocra have a plus to their decks. Yeah. So that's that's helpful as well mm -hmm. um, and there are there are a lot of uh you can have spell options with the sorcerer where you don't care that much that you don't have that high of a charisma so it's important for like sure. saving throws and stuff but if you're the buffer and defender like shield gives you plus five ac no matter what your charisma is sure and uh you're, you're sitting on a 13 and barely qualifying as uh, <laughs> technically if you're not I guess technically if you're not cross-classing you could be a dump stat charisma sorcerer uh, which would be funny somebody with like a 7 charisma who is still a sorcerer um, <laughs> like they, they don't lose any spell slots or even spell selection it's not like a wizard where your, your spell selection is based on how much your intelligence is Right. Uh, they just have a certain number of spells um, so that's a funny idea I don't know how because there's only so many spells that are like fly and invisibility, that's where true. where you don't yeah. you know care what your what your score is. Um, but back and, on yeah. uh, back on Tarask was the other big combat thing, yeah. the level twenty. And this is always a funny one for spellcasters because Tarask is like they get advantage on all their saves against any magic, and some magics don't affect it at all and have a chance to like reflect back at the caster. Um, but when I actually when you actually do a deep delve into it. It, based on how the rules work on it, you can still. Uh, there are two kind of shenanigany combos you can do. There's reverse gravity, and then disintegrate. And uh, now disintegrate either deals its full damage or no damage if they make their save, and it has advantage. So you're sort of like ah. But at 20th level, you're working on with like something like a 19 difficulty class on your saves, yeah. and it has a plus zero on deck saves. So, uh, yeah, it has advantage, but it has to roll a 19 or a 20 or it's taking the full disintegrate damage, which yeah. uh, is something like 70 damage. Um, and so you only need, like, 10 castings of disintegrate to, like, just kill it. And you could just... The idea of just reverse gravity and just having this, like, like turtle on its back, Tarask, just yeah. angrily yeah. angrily flailing in the air as people are just shooting stuff at it. Um, With Titan's spell, couldn't you have disadvantage mm. you for could, the saving throw. Yeah, you could counter to make it so it's just got the one shot to hit 19 or 20. So uh, potentially, if a, if a few of your guys just have disintegrate and heighten mm -hmm. spell, you're potentially yeah. making things just get <laughs> so. You're not even really in that much danger, because it can't, like, get to you. Like, it doesn't have a fly sure. speed or anything. So I think uh, it's just desperately trying to make it save against the river's gravity, which is just <laughs> not going to happen, like, for a while. Uh, it's not smart. Like, it's not an intelligent creature. It can't, like, figure out how to uh, wiggle in a certain way that gets it free of the effect. Um, it doesn't take any damage when it drops down. Uh, it's immune to any, like, non-magical damage. Oh, sure, sure. Including, including falling damage. Um, but the other thing that's funny, and this is more of a rules interaction thing that's kind of interesting, uh, which I think originally came up just as a cautionary tale for druids, but uh, if you use uh, Polymorph... Um, again, you know, again, it has advantage and it might make it save, but uh, if you have enough casters going, it's gonna fail yeah, at some point. Polymorph, yeah. Um, so you polymorph it, and then you just power word kill, and uh, you just make it something that has less than a hundred hit points. And the way the rules interaction is, if you are that creature at that moment, if you have less than a hundred hit points, you die. Not like it doesn't kill the creature you've been turned into; it you just die. Um. Mm. Which is a which is a scary thing for druids who are just like I'm gonna rotate. I'm 20th level. I'm gonna rotate through a bunch of beast options, and it's right. like yeah, until the wizard just goes die. And then, interesting. Um. Uh, so that's a that's a funny way to just be like, nope, this combat's over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or if you could if you could polymorph the Tarask, is that yeah. I'm assuming you could somehow. Yeah. Then a, yeah. Make him more manageable. Yeah, you can and, do stuff where you can just put him in a cage for the duration of the spell, and um, then just try to quickly move him somewhere, maybe some sort of teleportation circle <laughs> or whatever you're gonna do to send him to, you know, the 
<laughs> send him to another plane or whatever. That is a funny idea. Teleportation circle goes to, has to specify, like, established permanent teleportation Correct, yeah. circles. But um, if you knew one. But if there's one of those on one. the moon. Um, <laughs> and then could he get back? That's, I, mean, I, don't, that's, I don't think that it's a weird world where the Jurassic can cast... Uh, that actually that makes a really funny lore thing that I might put in games now where if somebody gets like a nat 20 perception check like if somebody's like I want to make a perception check at, and it's like nighttime and they get a nat 20 and there's nothing to see I might have them look up at the moon and see that there's something on it That's like destroying and walking around some giant thing is on the moon and it's just like no context no idea all you see is I love this like, idea yeah. I, I want to sort of just for a second develop this. So <laughs> the one day I was a high level wizard. I'm all about this tangent, by the way. This is an yeah, excellent let's tangent. go on it. Yeah. So so there's a high level wizard, and mm -hmm. he he actually goes to the moon, okay, sure. and he installs a teleportation circle, mm -hmm. and then he shares it with some close friends, and it, he calls it his like the dumpster. Yeah. So so it's the <laughs> teleportation circle that just goes there, yeah. and like if the thing can't use teleportation circle spell yeah it's basically a dumpster and you can just like hey i don't want this here i'm gonna put it in the dumpster <laughs> and it's like and then somehow the players would get a hold of that and then now, utilize it for their means this, this is all a the, the probably a reason this is a little less uh practical option is this is actually just a really roundabout way to do uh plane shift on something because oh, you can target true. something with plane shift and just like be like, I'm done with you. You're going to the plane of water. Um, but this is if we're all fifth level or less. Yeah. So so that's <laughs> where isn't plane shift is a little higher, right? Well, so. we're talking about a Tarask fight with like 20th level casters. Oh, so okay. Somebody well, would have plane shift. Probably set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's one of those like it's a really roundabout. It's more of a. Uh, it's like yeah, you could plane shift your garbage into the plane of fire or. You can just use teleportation. Like, you could have a permanent teleportation circle in your wizard tower that uh, isn't that large. Like, maybe it's uh, maybe it's under your toilet, and, like, all of your poop just goes, like, it hits the circle, and it goes to the moon. And uh, it's just like, what's that large dark spot on the moon? And be like, it's, like, a thousand generations of wizard shit. Yes, uh, <laughs> And, like, I would love that there, there would be some sort of um, intergalactic police... That is that finds out that he's just been lingering, <laughs> right? And they're like Planet Preservation oh. Society, and oh, then the, it's like this whole episode of him I'm having just picturing the the, uh, the the wizard starts having all these like paladins coming to his tower to try to smite him, and they're all like paladins of like of uh, of the moon goddess, and they yeah. just, they're, stop <laughs> putting <laughs> shit on our queen. <laughs> okay, sorry, we had to do that. Tangent. Yeah, that was a good tangent important. though, uh, that was and. Important. There, it will now be it will now be canon that there is a Tarask on the moon that got uh, teleportationed up there. Um, <laughs> the wizard couldn't figure out what else to do about it. Um, <laughs> he out the higher level spells and was like, I do have that one circle on. Be like, I couldn't figure out what to do with it, so we just like polymorphed it into a turtle and, and so, did, drew a so, teleportation circle, threw it on it. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Um, Oh, what was the other uh, other fun? Oh, there's a uh, I think there's an item in an upcoming D and D supplement coming out. It's a it's a scroll of like Tarask summoning, um, oh, which this is a total tangent. But uh, but it gave that me the thought. So bad. I had yeah. <laughs> it's a scroll. So it's probably a high level spell. You're gonna have to make a check to make it happen. But the idea of like it just summons it like 500 feet away from you, yeah. and it, you have no you control over it. It's just here now. Um, you don't want to be near that. No. Yeah. It's like, you do it 500 feet away, and then you start running the other way. Um, but uh, it made me think that the way the spell is cast, when I was reading through the stats of the Trask, I was like, it's immune to fire damage. It doesn't take damage from, like, bludgeoning, slashing, piercing, from non-magical things. So effectively, this scroll could summon the Trask by it coming down, like, as a meteor. Just like, <sighs> through the oh, atmosphere. Yeah. And then just crater, and then it just gets up, because it didn't take any damage from any of that. Super cool. Um, but yeah, that's that was, that was a little funny thing. This reminds me, I, I so I finally through the quarantine, I finally finished uh, that first season of Critical Role. Oh, nice. And this reminds me of in the first season they visit where the the uh, Dragonborns are all right. 
and they, spoilers for campaign one if you haven't seen it. Yeah, campaign. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's we'll be, we'll be two minutes and then we'll be back on. But yeah, I know what you're talking oh, about the the dragon. Spoiler alert! Spoiler a movie that takes place. Been out for five candy. years. Watch it. Um. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you if you ever catch up to that. Yeah, yeah. But there's something which takes place in a canyon and in all this snow and ice, and it reminds me a lot of something like that. Is like, do we yeah. really want to do? this spell scroll <laughs> like really is this gonna, is this gonna turn on us like, i do love when there's there's that moment of planning and then they all look at each other like this is a bad idea isn't it didn't we make a better plan and uh, they all look at each other like we're not gonna come up with a better plan what's better than that but <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that scroll just sounds so dangerous like, yeah why would you ever it's a uh, it is throwing the hulk at your enemies and hoping it works out um <laughs> he's more mad at that. Yeah. Right. Uh, I bumped a button on my keyboard, which is making sure I didn't accidentally turn off my computer. Uh, nope, I'm good. All right. Um, so back on our on our list. So aside from combat, there's yes. exploration, which we've kind of touched on a little bit already. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the idea of having the skills and uh, other options to get through the world. Uh, be that through e e even through like social situations in like a cityscape or getting through a forest um, But most of that the skill end. I think it's just gonna be solved by backgrounds essentially sure. um, Have somebody have a criminal background so they can use some thieves tools um, Make sure they don't dump stat their intelligence so they can actually disarm mm -hmm. a trap when necessary uh, Or just say screw it and like just like use Teleportation options to like get around stuff Ooh. Um, yeah, I mean dimension door things yeah. like that. I loved using that. I I've used certain ones of those. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of puzzles are solved uh, pretty easily by just saying like, well, I just appear on the other side of it. Um, sure. And it's one of those like the f <laughs> the floor is lava. It's like, well, I can cast fly. So okay. that's why I, I do <laughs> like I like the idea of one time. Boodle just was kind of being really irreverent, which was part of, sort of part of his personality. Right. But uh, he, just this gnome sorcerer in the castle, and he used fly to go outside. He was going to, like, explore. Yeah. And the guards see him do it. <laughs> and it's like, he just pretends he didn't do it, but they saw him. Yeah. And then it was like, now he's in prison, and there were these glyphs that stopped. It was like counterspell glyphs. Right. So, like, there was no way he could just escape. So he kind of that was one of the, that was one of my as a player experience of like, okay, like, the way this world is run, mm -hmm. you you can't necessarily just uh, do anything and that there's no consequences. Right. So it was a it was a good like little tangent I guess in our game. Right. And there were some consequences, but <laughs> I I think something like that to the puzzle could be a way to kind of limit the sorcerer to mm -hmm. a certain amount of things and that's yeah. just up to the dm maybe to get like what does this dungeon have that would stop you from just solving right. that puzzle and to be fair like uh i think like uh what, i was re-watching an indiana jones movie a little while ago and it's one of those like there's a bunch of like skeletons and dead bodies along the way of people who couldn't figure out the puzzle um mm -hmm. but similarly it's it's a world where you're not the only person that knows how to cast fly so the idea yeah. like oh well no one's happened to raid this dungeon before that could cast fly and it's just like well no probably not and so you probably go to cast fly and still need to notice like you like look to the right and there's uh there's someone who, there's like someone who's been like harpooned and then pulled to the wall and you see this like old like body of an old dead sorcerer that tried to just fly past the scenario and it makes yeah, you kind of go, whoa, hold on. Exactly. Um, or you get hit with an arrow while you're flying, like right. one of those. And then it's like you have to make a check to see if you're still concentrating on this right. flight. And then <laughs> as, a, as a DM, you kind of want to figure out what the mechanism is that's uh, that's setting off these kind of traps. Sure. Um, I know as, as a DM, the way I'd probably go around it is like you might look around and see like a soft glow from one end and it's like a permanent light spell that's been set up with it through holes and then there's like an observer on the other side so when something passes through um you know like an old laser trap kind of thing exactly. it like then it triggers off the the mechanical aspect um so it could still be defeated but it involves taking that time to mm -hmm. investigate and right. stop this from and you just like cast a light on the sensor area um, and then it like sees light still, and you can just pass right through. But yeah, it's still yeah. there's still a way to make 
trap and skill challenges for players when you're running a game of all sorcerers. Um, uh, I know I've been guilty of situations where a player takes a certain feat or a certain ability that just bypasses uh, like an entire mode of play, and so I just sort of like just stop bringing it up. I'm like, their passive perception is like. Their passive perception is 25, their passive investigate is 20. I can't reasonably say they got hit by a trap. Uh, like, he's just like, as long as they're in near the front of the party, they're just like, trap, 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 right, right. trap. Um, and all that kind of stuff. Which, by the way, players, uh, talk to your DM, because they may have had, you know, 10 pages of traps they've designed that just kind of ne are never going to be used because you've invalidated that entire mode of play. <laughs> there, was the, there was the time I think maybe one of the only times that uh, that we were able to get through something with uh, was it like it was like divine favor or something or it was something some like sort of like it was like uh, monkey used it for oh right that's the cleric ability where you can just ask god ability. to solve your problems you just uh, ask the god to so and we went through like an entire like did like a there week's travel a instantaneously. Yeah. yeah, that would have been involved in getting through this these fields. Right. And yeah, something like that. It, yeah. There was a there was a real fun um, Velociraptor encounter there with like the corn. You know, it was a big yeah. field of corn, uh, and so it was the idea of like a corn uh, a corn thing with these like these raptors kind of weaving through. Yeah, and yeah. Coming in, um, oh. but uh, but then you can just when you can just ask your god to put you on the other side of it, then yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we're not really worried about any kind of exploration, because there's there's spells to solve it, there's uh, a way to get the skills. Yeah. Um, you kind of need to... You need to have yeah. that sit down with the other players, because you do have that limited spell selection. It's not like a wizard where you can just up your toolkit every time. Right. Um, so you got to so make sure... Bearing the load of what... Each right. person is doing the maybe utility spells, just yeah. sharing the load because you maybe don't need everyone to have feather fall. No, but, if but no some, yeah. if somebody <laughs> if somebody doesn't have feather fall, you need to scale down that mountain, and that is a bad idea. That just uh, sounds horrible. <laughs> it's a yeah. bunch of like four characters with eight strength all trying to like athletics check down this mountain mm -hmm. is uh, not not a good plan. not not a great not a great look. Um, and then for, like, roleplay story stuff, we touched on this a little bit with charm effects, um, but they have spell options for uh, charm person, dominate person. Those aren't permanent solutions, because a lot of times the, the target is then aware they were charmed sure. when it ends. Um, but... Oh, if you have disguised self or something else that yeah. was going on, Come you in. can subvert the consequences a little. Yeah, and if you did... Uh, soul spell might come up, too, with, like, charm person where they maybe know they were charmed, but they don't know that you were the one that charmed them. Right. Um, right. I'm not sure rule, like, rules is written. I'm not sure how that works out. But I would say if you used your subtle spell, uh, that would be an interesting way to kind of get around that. that. Um, but yeah, that can, be, that can be very interesting. And uh, depending on your campaign world, you're probably not the only sorcerer, but they're not that common. So you, you have a certain amount of weight to pull, because if there's a war that breaks out, you know, it becomes real valuable is the dude that can flick his fingers and blow up a battalion. Um, yeah. So you gotta, uh, you'll have a lot of worth that way. I know for, for like, role and story stuff, for the idea of, like, who is this party and how do they come together kind of thing, uh, the idea of, like, the, this, um, you can do it pretty much as a, as a basic party, um, I do like the idea of a like a wizard who is studying how magic is passed down through bloodlines, and it's like requested the presence of all of these people, and they all they all come together and kind of meet each other at that tower. And it could be the wizard giving missions to look at for artifacts, or it could be just these people have some camaraderie. You know, it could be it's basically a regular D and D story at that point. Sure. Um, but it's or or yeah. maybe there's this mysterious asteroid and it's kind of like a fantastic four sort of situation where mm. they were studying the asteroid and and Ooh. suddenly they all kind of get these yeah. abilities and that's fun that's sort of a, uh i guess spoilers for a recent critical role come back in a minute oh. uh but uh 
the uh, there's a I won't get too much in detail, but the sure. uh, there's the idea of the, this relates to a recent Critical Role thing where uh, the idea of like maybe an asteroid that has uh, fragments of a different bunch of different planes of existence like sure. attached to yep. it, and it's crashed into a town, and each of those different like elemental forces have like uh, coalesced into individuals that are in that area. I um, like that idea. So you they, could have a yeah. Then that would make sense role playing wise and choice because I don't see, I don't see like storm sorcery coming in unless there's something like mm -hmm. yeah maybe this piece from the elemental plane mm -hmm. and maybe there's a piece of this like wild magic situation like a, a fragment of where the water and airplane meet where it's just storms yeah uh, like that that like hits a certain person. Um, but that could be a, that could be a fun way to do it. You guys are maybe all friends from a certain village, and uh, a little bit. Um, oh God, what's that movie? There's a movie I really like. That's it's like a found footage superhero movie, and I forget the name of it. Um, Super Eight. No, or... it's um, they get like psychic powers and telekinesis oh. stuff, and uh, oh, I think I think I, I know. I know, what about. I know what I'm talking about. Get in the comments with what movie what I'm thinking about. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they eventually learn to fly and like do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Michael B. Jordan's in it, and he's he's that's like I think that was that was one of the, like I knew him before he was famous kind of thing. But right. like I remember I, seeing him in that yeah. and being like, this dude's a very good actor, and I look forward to seeing him in a lot of things. Um, and oh god, I hope I'm not like misremembering like if it's some other actor because I hate I hate oh, when I'm like I'm like this act, especially when the actor's like African American and I'm like that guy that's totally different guy and like oh, oh I no. got some I got I got life. some stuff to work on um oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Something, it's Michael B. Jordan though there was a specific um, um I saw the the satyr the satyr or the oh, like, satyr satyr yeah they are sort of kind of if you only could have one sorcerer in a party they are one that's plus two to charisma, plus one to dex. They have right. magic resistance. They that can have... be campaign specific, but they are. I love the idea of a of a, a satyr. That's ooh, that kind of works with the same idea. You've had this asteroid of different planes of existence crash on this village, and there was this like fun love and or you know satyr who was just sort of you know friends with the local um, you know the local uh, the the local kids like they all kind of grew up together, sure. and then the satyr was there and. Uh, and now it's a now it's a group. It's like our home has been destroyed. What are we going to do? And they kind of right. the satyr maybe knows like it's like well you know what happens when other people's parents get murdered by a giant asteroid? <laughs> Time to go adventuring. <laughs> yeah, I feel maybe he got there from the Feywild or right. something. Ooh, okay. maybe the wizard sent the meteor as part of his experiments Ooh, and is now manipulating dark. the crew. And that is so it's, dark. It's like, I've heard of your misfortune. Come to my tower. Oh. We'll be studying your thing. And then oh, it all gets revealed horrible. at the end. And they gotta that's, kill the wizard. That's true lawful evil. That's like, <laughs> that's uh, all DMs are lawful evil. Um, <laughs> Brennan Lee Mulligan is a wonderful person, yeah. except when he's DMing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that guy. And then, like, you get... It's probably like till the end of the game, you don't know he's the guy that did right. all of it. Oh, I that. love, I love. Uh, somebody yells at him like, "You're a bad guy, Brennan." And he's like, "I'm all the bad guys," and he just does like a. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, pretty. That's I'm a good DM. Game. I'm all the bad guys. That's uh, a good. <laughs> so good. Um, well, that's only one uh, story option, but it's a good one. I think if we had a campaign premise and said, "Hey, guys." We're gonna do an all sorcerer game. It's gonna be one where a an asteroid that was like dragging all different planes of existence, uh, shards of them, and then crashes into your hometown. And so uh, it could be a large city, so you could have a bunch of different people of di different backgrounds, and it'd be like the five yeah. of you. Uh, the five of you were all friends. You were all centered in the city. You could be from whatever background in that city. So you could have a criminal, the urchin. You could have uh, like the, the hermit from outside of town. You could have a bunch of people. Um, that were all in the area, but then town destroyed, um, and there's only a few survivors, including you guys. And now you're manifesting these sorcerer abilities. There was your other idea that I thought was amazing, but essentially it would work with the sorcerers. Is if you had four or five different sorcerers, and they're each from like a different part of the world, and right. they're all vying to become the avatar of oh, the world. Oh yeah. 
yeah, you that can... would work with sorcerers, and yeah. you could have like one of them is water. They have shape water. They have this and that other sure. thing that is. Then one of them's fire. They they have you know. Uh, yeah, it would definitely be uh, it would be different thematically because it wouldn't be monks. It would be sorcerers, but still, sure. it would fit that that kind of general con umbrella concept of. Um, these are different people from different areas then coming together and working together figuring out who's the like the like the true avatar of them um, uh, yeah that could be really rad I think uh, season one Keyleth uh, Critical Role season one Keyleth um, doing that Aramente thing where she's from oh, the, the yeah. air she's from the like air druids and there's also fire druids and earth druids and water druids yeah um, and she has to travel to all those things but the idea of uh somebody from each of these different tribes who then come together to then travel to each of the different tribes. Um, yeah, and I, yeah. I like the idea of them being um, Genasi. That, that, yeah. that maybe they came from each of these tribes. It's a really rare situation and mm -hmm. they were sort of these chosen and sent out and they find yeah. each other and they're like rivals slash friends. Right. That could be, and the, I always like the idea of the way I think tiefling sometimes can just pop up in a family versus being like an every generation kind of thing. Uh, I like mm -hmm. the idea of the Genasi being something like, what's like, well, how do you know this one is the chosen? Be like, well, they're partly made of earth. Like they're, they sure. have clay dripping off of them. And it's just like, uh, it's like, how do you know they're the chosen of the earth uh, tribe? And it's like, they're made of dirt. Because uh, look like, at him. They're He's manifesting like... these powers and it's like, like, his like, skin is no like question, almost man. stone and like right. it has like lava light through it. I don't How know. do you know they're from the fire tribe and their hair is just like, <laughs> and you're like I don't know man I don't know how to crack this puzzle um. <laughs> that could be another though sort yeah. of way to make sorcerers come together as a party yeah and, and you could have the um, the like the sister tribes that nobody usually talks to like the uh the shadow tribe that's like near the oh. underdark and so you have that shadow sorcerer come up and be like no i have a right to be here kind of kind of black cool. panther uh black panther style where there's the the tribe that's not um my, my brain's on michael b jordan now uh but <laughs> there's that there's that side tribe and it could be a good guy or a bad guy because it could be the good guy who's just part of a tribe that's not usually involved but is now asserting their 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 rights or their right. authority to the challenger to be a part of the thing and then you can have the bad guy who's just like a uh, like a forgotten or uh, you know they have their backstory on why they're mad about 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 stuff uh, uh, and that can be a very sympathetic story um, uh, and that can be your bad guy is the, the sorcerer that uh, was denied participation um, you know unjustly and yeah, is like taking it out on the world kind of thing and the team's got to come together um, so yeah like steal your DM, steal your ideas. <laughs> steal the good ideas. It's uh, it reminds me of teaching a lot. Where, like, when you're a teacher, there's uh, there you don't you don't think a ton about like copyright stuff because you're not making them you're not making money off of anything. Right, you just right. scan you just scan the internet or all of society for cool ideas and make them work um, in the scenario. And same thing with dungeon mastering here. You kind of just like Ooh, that's a fun idea, and you just like steal it, and, I, and that's that might sound weird to some people, but I've I've heard like Matt Colville talk about it and all this stuff where he's like, he's like, he ta I know he, I like when he talks about stuff because he's like I'm not special. I've just been doing this for a long time, and I'm just like stealing the things I like from right thirty years of doing it. Um, yeah. It, but it, with that that sense of uh, or that lack of hubris where you're like I'm not like I'm not important or special. I just and grabbing these things and like when you see new or younger DMs come up you're like and they have a cool idea you're like that's awesome I'm taking it <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think finding that inspiration is is a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I have I have a game that I I run with some friends that were all new to D&D &D. I, I don't know if I was like the most experienced player but they did, had no idea and they just wanted to play and I said, right. well, out of everybody, I mean, you guys are in trouble if you don't even have somebody who's played before. Right. But uh, they were like, would you please DM? And so it's been fun to just uh, introduce it to people. But I agree. Like, you're, you've you been an inspiration for me, obviously. <laughs> um, listening, I, I listen to the podcast because just on Critical Role. But right. obviously, I mean, 
Matt oh, yeah. Todd Mercer, he's in another level. But I love I love seeing your style and his style, and they're not exactly the same. But mm-hmm. but there's certain things that um, you want to do well right. to help your to help your party just have a lot of fun. But I yeah, like, those, uh, those were my inspirations for sure. I like to think that. Um... I like to think of myself, and this is aspirational, but I like to think of myself as, uh, 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 like, oh yeah, just Matt Mercer, if Matt Mercer had two kids and no time to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of seat of the pants, because there's no time to, like, fully flesh out a lot of storylines and backgrounds and stuff, and it's be like, and be like, you see the moves that he makes and stuff, and like, you know, and he's a person, like, he get, he's sure. sometimes ped- put on a pedestal and stuff. And, and I've seen, like, I've been, it's weird to watch as somebody who's been DMing for a while, and you look and you go, you see the missteps happen, you're sure. like, and, uh, and I've seen, I follow him on Twitter, and he'll get on Twitter afterwards, and go, that was a mistake, I probably shouldn't have done that, and, but it, for me, it's just like, uh, like, yeah, I mean, that's, you're DMing, like, those, exactly. that's gonna happen, like, it's totally understandable, and, exactly. uh, it's one yeah. of those, with, with fame and, uh, uh, recognition comes a lot of judgment from people, uh, and, uh, it's one of those uh, yeah you don't I don't see it a lot from other DMs I see it from more of the white room you know uh, society that wants to judge everything Um, (laughs) they're like the same it's the same energy as somebody who's like but you could be doing 15 damage instead of 13 damage and be like and the DM could add two hit points and it's that's you know right it's like you could also be having fun yeah (laughs) you could also just be having a good time um I think it's great to take inspiration from everywhere. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Relics and Rarities, but I, I watched Deborah Ann. Yeah, Cole. no, she's, she's like she's another inspiration. She's really she's really fun. Um, There's some amazing DMs. I I think just like like you said, just go see everything and and take and learn from everybody's style and what they're good at. Right. Um, I am trying to make sure that. I was remembering correctly on that one movie. That movie, that I feel movie. like I saw the I kinda, trailer for it. I really need to like my brain, like you know, know when you're having a discuss. You mentioned something and you're having a discussion, you're but every like third sentence, your brain is like, you have to know that thing, or you're gonna be bothered this whole time. Uh, Chronicle, that's the movie, and I was right. That is Michael B. Jordan. Okay, there you go. Yeah, you, so you were right. Wait. Is it Michael B. It says Michael Kelly Jordan. Yes. Or unless Jordan I Michael Kelly. That's the what he told me. for this movie. I knew what you were talking about when you said it. Right. Because I uh, I didn't see the movie, but I saw the trailer. Right. And was it? Yeah. And I uh I like it's one of the. I mean, it came out at the time we were all a little bit tired of the um, a little bit tired of the found footage movies. Uh, cool. so it came out at an awkward time, but it was actually like the best of the found footage movies. Um, mm-hmm. it was very good. I liked it a lot. Um. Yeah, Chron- we, that's that's what we need, and that is literally an asteroid hitting a small town and a bunch of friends <laughs> getting a bunch of sorcerer powers, hey, <laughs> and then antics. Premise. You know, and antics then ensue. To your D and D campaign, and like, people yeah. maybe didn't even see the movie, so you <laughs> surprise them with all the plot. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. What happens? You could do that in like a low magic setting too. That'd be that'd be weird, where you're the only people with mm-hmm. magic. Uh, because this, you know, this asteroid hit your small town and it got, uh, got you and your like friends that. a bunch of abilities. And now you're only, it's like, what, uh, what happens to people when you can telekinetically throw cars and everybody else, like, the best they can do is, like, throw a baseball. Yeah. And, uh, that's when you better have subtle meta magic. Yeah. And there's <laughs> a, <laughs> well, I know there's a, uh, uh, I know, I think Michael B. Jordan's character in that movie, uh, like uses the if they're like flexing and exercising their powers and he like he just goes to a parking lot at some point and just moves someone's car and uh, and that's the 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 chaotic person in the party who's just mess, using their powers to mess with people um, and then they they stay they like stay and watch when the like lady comes out with her groceries like goes to where the car was parked and like looks around and sees her car like it's just like eight spaces away from where she There's expected no way but she's just happen. looking over at it just confused like that what <laughs> just uh questioning their reality uh, from this little move. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, well, the tangents are getting more frequent, so we're probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we covered sorcerers pretty well. I mean, I'm sure yeah. there's some details we missed, but. Um. What was it? The. Uh... Oh, the yeah, the uh, the other the only thing I think I didn't mention, which was just sort of a skill exploration and role play thing, was uh, humans, half elves, and half orcs taking the prodigy feat to get expertise in a skill. Uh, it, when there's when you need persuasion and you already have a high charisma, uh, being the like the half elf that takes prodigy charisma, um, sitting on a like a seventeen bonus to persuasion Ooh. late game. Um, that's nice. whether that's totally necessary when you can literally just like dominate anyone you want. <laughs> You're just like, King, give me your throne. Okay. And it just hands it over. Um, <laughs> There is something useful about uh, doing something without magic, and yeah. that's where the high charisma is useful sometimes yeah. with persuasion. I mean, if you, it's more powerful to uh, share a convincing argument and the person mm-hmm. believes it on its own merits, right? Rather than just rather than not <laughs> you make them like three it. hours later being like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like uh, like prodigy and like like prodigy stealth with a good with a good oh. dexterity and invisibility uh, is like there's there'd be no excuse to saying like That's if somebody cool. can't get where they want to be it's like it's like well I have I did a extend spell and I have a plus uh, like I don't know like a plus fifteen stealth and it's just like yeah you can be wherever you want to be <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. Well, there we go. Uh, cool. Let's party, sorcerers. We got a we got a, that's it's a really rad campaign actually set up. We play Chronicle uh, with sorcerers. Um, that's fun. yeah. In like a no magic setting, especially it would be kind of weird. Um, yeah, they, uh, or just a regular D and D setting. Um, but yeah, I do love that idea of that that asteroid with shards of a bunch of planes of existence crashing. The wizard that sent it to destroy your town, manipulating all of you into like Gosh, doing missions that's to try such to solve. A bad, bad guy. What an <laughs> evil person. Just a that's very yeah. Um, just heartless. Just this, you know. It's like, hey, and maybe it's the secret to immortality or something. Um, maybe it's a variant on on lichdom, where if he gathers enough of the planes powers of the different planes. And focuses it, uh, you know. He keeps he keeps having you guys come back to like give blood samples that he studies. Unlocks the secret of the bloodlines. Yeah, and, and think, it, magic and... making like he's doing it for noble reasons, or or even just his own curiosity. When really it's a, a path to you know evil godhood or something. Wow. This is a this is a sweet it's campaign sick. idea. I'm all about it. A sick guy. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, and then then they can multi class and stuff too, um, if you allow that for the campaign. If you think it's worthwhile or thematic, but uh, that yeah. that could be interesting where people like uh, do X number of levels in the sorcerer and then start multi classing. Yeah, that's a good point. If you yeah. allow multi classing, then it could help a lot with certain weaknesses. Again, with sorcerer, yeah. you're limited in your spell list, and mm-hmm. you're you have choices to make along the way, right. but. Maybe maybe you have somebody take somebody in the party takes ritual caster just so yeah. you unlock a few more just a few more things for you. Yeah, you get, having ritual options identify and uh, uh, stuff it's like a, that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that can be very very handy. Um, I think uh, people forget like we haven't played a lot of games. I don't think we played any games where somebody wanted to play a wizard, um, but because like, I think it's been undervalued the idea of having that ritual casting spellbook like you can do the the bubble of uh i have a free long rest without any risk of death um right that's a very powerful i did i did actually learn my from my mistakes so our group with our um our other game Mm -hmm. um where fishman Varus. oh yeah he took that. Uh, I had I built him in a way where he did the tome, the pact. Oh, okay. And so that that while he was a hexblade warlock, he had this also could kind of augment because we didn't yeah. have any spellcasters, 
So I was like, we're basically guys. I was just like, guys, like we we can't do anything. Like <laughs> we can like really beat guys up. Right. We can we, we can anything. murder a uh, a flightless dragon, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I I almost felt like I had to take it, but I felt like yeah. I it was still fun to do, and I did. I wanted to, but it was like, yeah, we needed some sort of utility going on. Right. Otherwise, I think, we we're gonna be lost in that world. Yeah. And that that may have been a reason why I think that campaign petered out a little bit because there's the uh, it eventually got to the point where you guys manifested a god on the surface of the world who's like marching around as this giant mountain man and uh, and then it's it got to the point of like uh, it's like well the barbarian is king uh, other people have like in charge of other things but all of you are functionally uh, all of them were functionally uh, I stab it till it's dead. And when you right. have this giant, like, <laughs> monolith like a god, mountain yeah. of a dude walking around, it's one of those, like, uh, it's like, hey, who knows how to banish a god? And they all kind of look at each other like, uh... <laughs> be like, well, we can hit it till it's dead. Be like, <laughs> that sure? Would, yeah, that would be interesting <laughs> if we ever came back to that. To yeah. Like it up. But I think we would have to go find some sort of... And you guys, I think they're ultimately it petered out, I think, because uh, the end of the game was sort of telegraphed. You were going, you figured out how to do it, and then it was just a matter of, like, going to the place, Fine. making yeah. the thing, hitting him with the things, and then hitting him with the spells that would banish sure. him. And sure. it was when it, once you had that all figured out, it was like, well, there's, like, two or three sessions left in this game uh, that will either result right. in you guys banishing the god and then retiring as kings of the land sure. or, yeah. or getting stepped on and everyone's dead. Um, and, uh, it'd be like, oh, you missed with that spear, uh, and then he, <laughs> then we're then dead. he smashes you when you're dead. Um, so it's one of the whether uh, I find uh, I always find it hard to finish a game when there's there's no like uh, mystery about what's going to happen. It's just you're going to succeed or not. Um, sure. And it's I don't like running games that are on rails and at that point it feels like it's on rails and technically yeah. it's not technically everybody go be like hey there's you've released a god of forge and chaos on the land and then you all go like well we could just like move right and be we like just, like you ignore them for a while i mean we really <laughs> did we yeah did. it's like yeah you could just fly away <laughs> like leave leave this land to this god and be like yeah like hey good on you man and just walk away um <laughs> I almost wish Monkey when he when he did summon that god. I almost wish he had bent the knee and be like, "Yeah, you're my new god. I you're know, here." It was bold um, move for him to finally be loyal to Moradin. Like, yeah, that was his first ever time he was all the loyal. way up to creating the Chaos Forge God, <laughs> and then after he made it, was just like, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, and I should be loyal to my god." And then uh, that was that a funny, great. It's just it like great how quickly choice. it turned. Um, and it's one of the, I think, uh, I don't know, I don't know what's, I never asked him really what his thought process was on that, um, other than like, I don't know. <laughs> it fits with Monk, I mean, that yeah. fits with what his character would do. Right, I mean, it's, he just, it's kind of his play style. His, yeah. Um, which you need a little bit of that, you need a little bit of a, the chaos wrench being thrown into yes. everything. Um, yes. You know, the, I don't I don't know that Critical Role is what it is without Sam Regal, um, right. throwing a little I, chaos wrench into stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important, and and why the game is attractive to me at times is while you can kind of, like you were saying earlier, it's like, yeah, we could have done two more damage, yeah. but like we could also summon a forge god <laughs> that is like opposed, that hates yeah. our forge god, yeah. and now the world is like, whoops. <laughs> Ew, that, whoops, right? like, we broke the world. <laughs> So I, to me, that's just so much more fun to yeah. play, and and it that's why I'm doing it. It's just right. fun to hang out with everybody and and just imagine these amazing things happening. So I I'm love it. I'm still, I will always be floored by the fact that you guys drew the entire deck of many things without any major consequences, <laughs> just because of the the order that you drew them in, and then having the knight that got summoned start the drawing cards. Drew the worst ones. He got all the worst ones. Uh, yeah. just, just in succession, he was picking yeah, the worst ones. This poor oh. fourth level fighter who's sprung into existence and then was immediately cursed by like six different curses. Um, 
<laughs> huh. All right, full tangents have been All accomplished. Right. Uh, we will we will call it there. Uh, thanks for coming by, Adam. Um, Thank you. This was fun. This was a, this was a good time. All right. Uh, we will see you. N uh, wait, Nick. Weekend after next. The right? weekend after next. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's well, if I got my schedule right. Weekend after next, uh, and we'll we'll move forward with the that that storyline. Uh, the Fallen Gods game is up on the YouTube channel. Uh, if anybody wants to go look at it, it was actually a very fun first session. They, my oh, only cool. disappointment was I got those warlock tiles that all like click together, you know, for terrain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they uh, didn't declare combat actions while in those locations, and so the tiles never came out. <laughs> I have these. Oh. I have these like this. Uh, I have this like storefront with a secret tunnel built, and uh, and this full like church uh, built, but nobody was like, I gotta punch somebody, and so uh, <laughs> so it never like never busted out on the on the table. Um, but uh, but no, it was a it was a fun time. Um, everything Very went really cool. well. I'll definitely watch yeah. it. I, yeah, it looked really fun. Yeah, there was some near there was some near death. There was a there there was a single. Uh, well, no, there were there were two spells that were warded into the wizard tower. Uh, one of which uh, made it so we didn't have a character death on the first episode. So. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, there, that yeah. was. <laughs> I mean, it's happened. But, yeah, it's happened. Yeah. Like session one, you're dead. Um, but, unlucky, uh, yeah, unlucky. but luckily there was there was a single there were there were two spells I had um, glyph of warding or whatever the the contingency spell sure. is were they were there in the thing uh, one of which got triggered the other did uh, the other got triggered after they left so they're not aware of it um, but uh, spoiler alert so there was a there was a healing there was a healing word that was the that was set to go off at uh, whenever the wizard or an ally was knocked to zero hit points, uh, and that went off at one point and made it so somebody didn't die. And the other thing was if uh, contingency of a uh, an upcast fireball to go off if uh, the other ward has gone off and then the wizard drops to zero. Uh, so as a he has a he had a fu ward set up yeah. in the tower, That's and they all got out of there before it went off. But then if they if they ever go look back, there's just this like scorched area. <laughs> 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 uh, good times. Um, all right, well we're gonna sign off. Thanks again, Adam. It was we'll fun. See, Thanks see you for next time. Me. We'll see you in the in the chat and in, in the thread and all that. Yeah, good yeah. times. All right, go play go play D and D Chronicle, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Or D and D Avatar. D and D Avatar. D and D Chronicle. Yeah, that's that's the Super game. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, peace, brother. Bye.